Hi folks, this is Tony from iForm Builder, and this video is meant to give you a quick insight into your new iForm Builder dedicated database. You'll see that I'm on the index page or the landing page for the private database, and we're going to use branded.iformbuilder.com as an example. So uh, what we can do from here is just click the sign in button. This will take you to the normal um, login page that you're used to, used to seeing, and then I will log in as server admin, so the user I just created for this account. And server admin is a new permission that's given out at the private database level. What you'll notice if you have this role is another tab in the top, which is called server admin. And so we'll walk through these changes first, since this is the biggest change that you'll notice. So the server admin will have access to this, and the first link that we'll look into is server info. The server info tells you how many licenses are allocated or allowed on the database. So we're actually allowed to have 100, and we've allocated 21, with 10 of those being active. We allow you to edit the email alert configuration here. So if you want to provide your own SMTP host to send emails from your account, you can do so in this section. You don't need to change these values, um, but if you like to, then the option's there for you. The subject of footer and footer 2 are pretty self-explanatory, so if you want, just come in here, hit edit email alert info, and you'll be able to configure these values. I'm going to cancel out of this, move on to the next section, which is the custom color scheme. This controls the color scheme for the admin portal branding. Uh, please keep in mind that any changes you make here will apply to the entire database. So you have multiple companies within your database, you will actually be applying branding scheme for all of those companies in the admin portal level. Folks still have the ability to control company info customizations, but the details you change here apply to all the companies within your dedicated database. And we'll walk through how to manage new companies here in just a minute. So you can come in here, click on edit color scheme, and then select the colors that you'd like to um, apply for the appropriate configuration. You can always go back to the default color by clicking this button, except I changed the label to something like uh, green. And I don't like that, I can click the default color and it'll revert back. So again, just scroll down and cancel out of this. Moving on, the portal branding is the next section that you'll run into. These are all the graphics that can be manipulated on the database. Just like the custom color scheme, anything you change here applies to the entire database. So that first landing screen image that we saw at the very beginning of the video, you can change the splash screen value to uh, something which is more um, company appropriate. You must match the file name and the size of the images exactly in order to upload these files successfully to the database. And you can do so one at a time. So you don't need to supply all the branding for the database at one shot. You can come back and work on it as you have time. And you'll see we've broken this down into the different sections of the admin portal. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this section as well. Moving on to the navigation tab customization. In here, you can actually change which links show under the company tab, as well as add new rows. So if you wanted to add a new link um, with information relevant to your company here, you can click on add new row, give it a name and the link that it should point to. Same goes with the support tab. And you can deactivate links by just simply unchecking the box. Cancel out of this. And move on to the help desk customization. By default, we have the help desk slider here linking to um, what we feel is the appropriate page in our knowledge base. Uh, but if you wanted to link to your own content or link this to different content within our knowledge base, then you do have the freedom to do so as well. In addition, you can turn this off by deselecting this checkbox here. And there's many links you can see. These are actually for all the pages within inside of the application. And you can add a new row if you like. Cancel out of this. So that completes the server info page. Again, only server admin level users will have access to this. So we'll move on now to the manage profiles. This is where you can create many different companies within your database. And as you can see, we've created a handful of these so far. So company zero, company one, company two, iPhone builder dedicated and dedicated deals. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to create a brand new one. So we'll click on this new button up top. And we'll just call this one new company assign the number of users that we want this company to have as well as the number of forms set it to active and then if you have a, a database which has a hundred users or more 
allow, you'll see this enable 2x usernames option. So you can configure this on a per company basis. If you didn't want this company to have the ability to create um, 10 usernames, only 5, then you would leave this unchecked. So we're going to go ahead and check this. I want to be able to add 10 usernames here, even though I will only have 5 licenses. So we'll go ahead and click, click Create Company. And you'll see actually we uh, <laughs> ran into a duplicate entry 38 for profile ID. So that's a fun error. Now let's see if we can just try this again. I actually just tried to clean up some um, companies before. So we may have to try one more time. There you go. So that's good to see. If, if you have deleted companies um, in the past, you may run into an error like that. And it's just telling you that it can't create an ID. Um, you see this first column here for that particular new company. So here's our new company. We have five users, 100 forms that we've assigned to it. And actually, I realized I've made a mistake. I don't need five. I need 10. So I can highlight this row, click Edit, and then come in here and change some details. So I'll click 10. I also have the option to set this to inactive or suspended. Inactive means that anybody in this company will not be able to log in while it's in an inactive state. Suspended allows you to um, submit new records and log in and change your password, but you wouldn't be able to see any of the other um, tabs at the top here. So you won't be able to build forms, manage users, view your data, or change company info while the account is in a suspended state. I want to use this, so I'll leave this as active. Um, actually, one more thing I want to show is if you try to over allocate the database. So if I try to give this account 100 licenses and hit save, you'll see another error message with which basically says that I've tried to over allocate the database. Um, to correct that, I just need to put it within a reasonable limit. And I want 10, so I'll just change this value to 10 and then go ahead and hit save. So from here, you can see that my new details 10 users have been saved and everything else has remained the same. From this page, as a server admin, you can manage a new company. And so because this new company has no users in it currently, I'll need to manage this and actually assign some users to this company. So just like we did to edit, we'll highlight, click Manage. And you'll notice up here in the top right hand corner it says Managing Profile 52. So now I'm basically assuming a role within this company. And I can click on the Users tab and I can begin to add users into this particular company. So this is a brand new company, there's nobody here. I'll go ahead and click New. And we'll just call this user 52. And we'll give it some details. And once we do this, we'll be able to save this user. Um, okay, let's do that password. We'll be able to give this user the rights that we want them to have. And you can always come back here and edit the user's rights at any time, just like you can in your normal iPhone builder account. This user is just going to be a user, no rights to create forms or admin or something from the Thunderplug. So I'll finish up by clicking Create User. And you can see that this user has been created. One more thing which is going to be a bit different for the server admin user is under Company Info, you're now going to see a section at the very bottom for API level access. And so the API access, which you can see down at the very bottom, will be under Dropbox. This section is only visible for server admins, and I'll quickly walk you through the authentication process for grabbing your access and refresh tokens. The client key is a long-lived asset for the entire database. So once I click on Show Client Key, the stars will um, go away and it will show me the client key. Basically, you want to copy this value, and the next move is to go to API Explorer. Within API Explorer, if we scroll down, we'll click on this Get Access Token field or button, I should say, and then a pop-up will um, show on the screen saying, please enter your client key. This is the value from step one. So I'll paste this in and click OK. And it's going to do a redirect, and you'll actually see that it comes back with the access token and refresh token. The access token is only good for one hour, but the refresh token is long-lived. So just like the client key, this asset um, the refresh token will actually never expire unless I go through this sequence again for the same user, which will generate a new refresh token. Typically, you shouldn't have to do this unless you feel the refresh token has been compromised or you want to start all over again. So you make sure to hold on to the refresh token 
and your client key is that's what you'll need for um, that's what you'll need to build your services. You should be requesting a new access token for each request as these will expire after one hour. And so that about sums it up. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact the help desk and we would be happy to help you out. Thanks and have a great day.